Hey only sons, this is Prajesh Shodri Yukandam Group. This video I am going to discuss a very good problem of gravitation that is from a very good book, Eklana. The question, in this question there is a central force involved but that central force need not be inverse scalar force. And we have modified this question slightly to the need of the J advance, uh, make it a multiple choice question. The original question was a subjective question. So let me read the question. The question said, in a certain universe, the gravity is conservative force, but not necessarily an inverse scalar force. In that universe, there exists a single point like mass m uh, that is influenced only by the gravity. As a result of the gravitational force, the mass orbits a fixed source, that is, this is a fixed source O in a circle, so that the source point is on the source point itself is on the circle's rim and the particle is also moving on the circle side. Neglecting the singular point, the meaning of the singular point is the position point where the center of force is there. So we just don't want to go there because the force may become infinite, shoot up. So neglecting the particle uh, getting uh, come to this point, so neglecting that point, select the correct alternatives. In the options, we have to find the velocity as a function of r and uh, how does the force varies with the what power of r whether the particle follows Kepler's second law that is the aerial velocity or not and one more thing that is not clearly mentioned in the question uh, it is written in the diagram that at this position p the velocity of the particle is v0 uh, at this p the, this is a diametrically opposite point so at this point p the velocity is v0 so what is given? We are given two things, V0 and the radius. In terms of V0 and radius, I have to find the velocity as a function of small r. Small r is the uh, general distance of the particle from the center of force. It can vary, it can vary like that. And also how does the force varies with the uh, distance, small r. Oh, let's go ahead. Oh, this is the motion going on. Uh, First of all, let me just write some, do some geometry part. Oh, particle is moving, particle is moving like this and this is the center of force initially here, uh, the, this distance is 2R and this is a general distance R. Velocity is always the tangential of the part. So at this point, let me show the velocity vector and this is the velocity vector and let me assume the velocity is the V. Oh, let me just join this to the center. So this is a tangent and this line is joining the center so obviously this angle must be a 90 degree. This is 90 degree, let me also join this. So this line, and let me zoom this angle to be theta. Alright, so you see this is the center of the circle, this is a radius, this is a radius. So in this triangle, uh, this side and this side are equal so their opposite angle should be equal. So uh, that supposed angle is this and it's supposed that angle is this. So if this is theta, so this should also be theta. And this is a diameter. This diameter substitutes a right angle at the circumference. So this angle is a right angle. And this is theta, so this should be 90 minus theta. And this is 90, this is 90 minus theta, so this should be theta. This one thing. And uh, at this position, the position vector is like this. This is the R vector. The head is like that. I just want to crowd this figure. So let me just show it. It's a unit vector of R in this direction. There is a this thing. In a central force motion, the two conservation laws are valid. That is the conservation of angular momentum and conservation of mechanical energy. We can solve this by using conservation of mechanical energy. How will solve? So uh, just let me uh, show how why the angular momentum is conserved in any central force motion a little bit information. Suppose this is a center of force. A particle is moving in any arbitrary path like that. Suppose particle is somewhere here. When the particle is here, the force is always towards at the center of force and its position vector, this is a F vector and the position vector is like this. If I write the torque about O, torque about O is R cross F, you can take any point, 
you can have this point if it is here so r would be here r would be in this direction f would be in this direction and in this direction also so everywhere this r is anti parallel to f so r cross f is zero and torque is equal to dl by dt so if torque is zero everywhere about o so l about o must be a constant or conserved so angular moment of the particle is conserved over the center of force and that center of force in this case is o so this is a conservation of angular moment so let me do a little bit of uh, geometry between the small r and 2r you see this triangle this right angle triangle this angle is 90 degree so this theta or well, it's sin theta so sin theta is uh, opposite side to the theta is small r and the hypotenuse is uh, diameter to r so sin theta is r by 2r let me erase this part now conservation of angular momentum about uh, o so l about o is a conserved so at the when the particle is at this position p the mass of the particle is uh, m so here at this position at p the velocity is perpendicular to the position vector so angular momentum is m v not into 2 r m v not into 2 r and the angular momentum at this position about o so now this is a velocity and this is a position vector this is a direction of position vector angle between position vector and the velocity vector is this angle this is theta so this angle is 180 minus theta so angular momentum at this position about o is equal to uh, mass into velocity and the position vector sin of the angle between r vector and v vector that is a sin of 180 minus theta so this m and m will get cancelled so v not into 2r is equal to v r sin theta all right so v v is equal to 2r by a uh, small r sin theta into v not and sin theta i can write as small r by 2r so if i put sin theta small r by 2r so this is 2r this is small r by 2r so 2r will go in the numerator so 2r square and that is a v not so we will get velocity as a function of a small r and there is a 4 capital r square by a uh, small r square into v not so we got the first option this was the first velocity of the point mass as a function of r this is a 4 r square v not by small r square so this is a correct option so there is a center force the force always acts towards o so at this position the force of force is this f always towards o and this particle is moving in a circle so it must be following the dynamics of the circular motion the, there must be some component towards the center to provide the necessary centripetal force so if i make a component of f one would be the tangential component i do not require tangential component right now but still i am showing this is the tangential component and this is the centripetal component fc so for the circular motion we can write uh, fc net force towards center centripetal force is a uh, m into ac ac is the centripetal acceleration so you can see that this uh, component of f along tangential direction is f cos theta and along centripetal direction is f sin theta so f sin theta that is m it is moving uh, in a circle of radius r and at the shown moment the velocity v so ac is equal to v square by which are capital r the radius of the circle oh now it's just a matter of putting the sin theta and the v so if i put the sin theta here so sin theta is r by 2r and m by r 
and uh, velocity whole square so velocity is a uh, v as a function of r 4 r square by small r square into v naught and the whole square so f f into r by 2 r and that will be here that the uh, square of this 4 is 16 so 16 m uh, r power 4 and the denominator is 1 r and this r and this r will get cancelled and this 2 will go that side so i have basically i am just writing it directly all right so just writing it directly so f is equal to 4 square and 2 will come here that will be 32 m is only 1 that will be r power 4 and in the denominator there is r r r from both side got cancelled so that is m r power 4 and uh, v naught square or divide by this will become r power 4 and 1 r will come from here so that will be 32 m r power 4 v naught square r power 5 so what is important here this f is proportional to 1 by r power 4 and that was the third part so here uh, it was in this option for said the force explained by the point must depend on the initial velocity actually it depends on the v's v naught so that is not right answer force experienced by the point mass will be inversely proportional to fifth power huh? that is correct so that that is the main part of the question of the e clark I know there is option D also a uh, position vector with respect to the center of circle sweeps out equal area and equal time. So they want to say that aerial velocity is constant. So that is always uh, whether the force is a uh, inverse square law or not, aerial velocity is always constant because aerial velocity uh, dA by dt is equal to L by 2m. L is the angular momentum about the center of force and is the mass and in any central force motion whether it is a inverse square law or not l is conserved so if l is conserved m is constant so obviously da by dt is also constant so aerial velocity is constant and that's what it means uh, position vector sweeps equal area and equal interval time means that aerial velocity is a constant so option c is also correct so what is a good thing here the in this kind kind of uh, motion the f is central but f is not inverse where f is proportional to 1 by r5 thank you